Good evening. We are on Thursday night, Thursday evening, the 20th of April, 2023. It is now 7.37 p.m. I'm going to be sharing with you. I was going to do the Bible, but I've been given this and I have only read the contents and I haven't read anything else. It's a very small leaflet and... Uh, my friend who I visited with some other ladies, widows. People of the Passion, Poems for Lent by Wren. It's a lady, someone she must know. I have no idea of what the poems are like, except that they are for Lent, which we've just gone through, and now we're into the second week of Easter. But as I've only got this on loan... I have to give it back at church on Sunday night, uh, Sunday morning, <laughs> not night. Uh, so I'll do some prayers from the Glenstall Book of Prayer for Thursday evening and then do the poems. So I will be as surprised as you when I'm reading them because I have not read them or looked at them. I'm just trusting Angela Canning who loaned me her leaflet which her friend, Wren, is the only name that's on there. So whoever Wren is, I believe it might be a lady. It must be a Catholic lady with the type, the contents. I can tell you the contents because I did look. Number one, the donkey. Number two, the man I am. Three, the garden. Four, pilot. Five, the Watcher, 6, Mary at the Cross, 7, The Thief on the Cross, 8, John, 9, Didymus the Doubter, presumably that's another word for Thomas, 10, Two Mothers, 11, Good Friday. I will be sharing those poems with you. I personally like poetry. Even Christian poetry is beautiful. So we'll just begin with uh, one or two ordinary prayers and then go to the evening prayers for Thursday. The Memorare. O most loving Virgin Mary, that it is a thing unheard of, that anyone who ever had recourse to your protection implored your help or sought your intercession and was left forsaken. Fill therefore with confidence in your goodness, I fly to you, O Mother, Virgin of Virgins, to come to you. Before you I stand, a sorrowful sinner. Despise not my poor words, O Mother of the Word of God, but graciously hear and grant my prayer. Amen. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. An act of contrition. O oh my God, I am sorry for all my sins. 
because they offend you who are so good. And with your help, I will not sin again. Guardian Angel Prayer Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. The Jesus Prayer, the Prayer of the Heart. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Amen. I will believe, I will leave the, the Thursday evening prayers until I've read the poems because the poems are poems and so then I like to finish with prayers you see in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen so I'm new to this I haven't read what this is before so I'm not familiar with the writer or the writing and let us enjoy it together Donkey how round and neat the four small feet that carry Christ today. Would he inside his donkey head prefer to leap and bray or toss his head in youthful play as any young thing might? But no, instead he bows his head to something good and right. He picks his way with delicate care along the palm-strewn road. With flickering ears and startled eyes, he bears his precious load. And any fear he might have felt or urge to run away is banished, for the Master's hand rests on his heart today. He hears the shouts, the cheers, the cries, Hosanna to the King. But does he know, as does the Lord, the pain that time will bring? Such little time before the shouts will turn from joy to jeers and crucify will be the scream. To fall upon his ears. But he will know the truth one day that on his back he bore with tender care the King of Kings, and knowing that, be sure that he is so much more than he has ever been before. Excuse me a moment, sorry, my nose is, is troubling me. Sorry, excuse me. Number two poem. The Man I Am The man I am feels loneliness and pain and yearns sometimes a warm and human love. But I am not the subject of such care because I do not come from here but up above. The man I am feels hurt by human hands and deep rejection stabs my human heart and sometimes many hours of weary work, drag down my steps and seek to bind the divine part. The man I am feels loss, both mine and yours, as he who sent me here can never do. 
but clothed in flesh, my purpose here is this, to bring you to the Father, him to you. And so it is. But could I human be if I did not sometimes look up and say, My Father, I will do your will, but still might ask that from my path should pass this tortured day. Number three, the garden. We went to the garden that night. After the meal, we had been before, but this was different. Well, we all knew that had he not said such strange and awe-filled words to us, that even my love-flooded heart was drowned in dread. I knew he was in pain. I thought I knew him well. But when he bade us sit and wait, that he would have some space to think and pray. I did not realise the agony of mind that he would face before the day. And so I slept. How could I? When this man I loved so much needed to know that those for whom he gave his life were by his side, awake, alert, to hold within their hearts his pain, his hurt. And when his breaking voice rebuked us, then I knew that all the triumph that I thought would soon be ours could not be gained without these anguished hours. And even knowing this, to my great shame, when danger came, I did not stay, but ran away. Pilot. I've rubbed and scrubbed and all but taken off the skin that clothes my hands. I've tried but still with fingers bleeding. I just cannot understand how it came to be that man went to his death at my command. I tell myself there were no choices. Tell myself no fault was mine. He ignored my wife who dreamt of voices telling her he was divine. But the people chose Barabbas, and I took the safer way. But now, no matter how I try, I cannot scrub the stain away. And when I turn to my gods to release me from this sin, I feel no loving presence as the love I sensed in him. And when I have no answer for the wrong which I have done, where will my household gods be then when faced with Yahweh's son? The Watcher Were we excited? Yes, of course we were. We'd heard the prophet's promise all our lives that our Messiah would come and lead us home, restore our lost position as the chosen race, and fill us once again with Yahweh's grace. We knew he'd fight, 
and that no force of empire, human or divine, would succeed in overcoming him. The chosen son promised to our forefathers from time begun. But did this man called Jesus fight the fight? Did he call up ye legions, break the foe, and onward into victory unchallenged go? No, he did not, for all his so-called power. Just fairy tales. God failed him in his dying hour. So were we conned? I think perhaps we were. And yet there is that certain something in the man that made so many of us follow him. Perhaps that's why I am crying here today and why I feel compelled to stand and pray. I raise my eyes now to his dying face. He meets my gaze with eyes so full of pain that I can barely take in breath again, for in that look I see no dread of death, but sorrow and compassion for this watching soul and know that my redemption is his goal. Excuse me. Mary at the cross. My son, my son, beloved one, how could it come to this? When as a babe upon my breast, you lay so helpless in my arms, while all around in boundless joy, the heavens rejoiced, my sweetest boy. Though I was warned of pain to come, and knew you were not just my son. But of the Lord's ordaining, I forbade all frightening visions of the years to come and tried to claim you as my very own, my lovely darling son, the Holy One, I am forced to see, was by God's grace just lent to me. And now, and now, what agony is this? To watch your torture and to see you die. Is this God's plan? However, can that be to sacrifice the child he placed in me? What do I know? Just that I love you so and claim the promise that the Lord gave me. The babe I bore would the Messiah be. The Thief on the Cross He saw the burden of the cross, unnumbered human sins, despair and loss, and in the unremitting cruelty of the rough-hewn spars twisting in agony, the hands that shaped the stars. He saw the sorrows of the human heart, held tight and close by one who had no part 
in the deep guilt and bitter festering shame, yet took his hand of cards and played his game. He heard the strangled sobs of earth-bound love, the distant rolling anger of some power above the mortal, and with trembling, fear-filled shame, he whispered, Lord, remember, please, my name. John, I met a man who waited, knowing there would be a word that would drop into the silence deep inside. That word which he would recognise as spoken just for him would resonate far down where all his darkest sorrows hide. He knew that he was trusted with the mother of his Lord to take her to his home and hold her grief. With loving arms and broken heart, he would do the best he could, and with certainty much clearer than any he had known. He knew the Lord would claim him as his own. Beloved, yes, beloved, was the word he heard that day through the pain and devastation in his heart and despite his human frailties his weaknesses his fears he knew he would have the strength to do his part for in that name beloved was the essence of the role he would play to the glory of the lord and that same name, beloved, is the promise to us all that we too are beloved of the Lord. Didymus the Doubter And for those who don't know, it's Thomas. Didymus, the doubter, well, that is what they have said, when sometimes I have just not been convinced that everything will turn out right, that he is who they say. For I am quite, quite certain that he died on that dark day. I saw his tortured body as they took it from the cross. I heard his mother sobbing in her agony of loss. I watched the wounds no longer bleed, his faltering heart grow still. I knew that he could not come back to life and never will. But then I came to be with them and in the upper room. They told me that he had been seen and some of them had even been with him. What? This cannot be. Nor I believe until I see with my own eyes, his living, breathing body. Until I do, I fear the lies. But now, what is this subtle bending of the air, the sweet, warm breath, this presence which I swear is him, is him, and I can see the wounds those scars which he lays bare for me. 
I cannot stand, and I can hardly bear to see. His loving, holy eyes look down on me, and so I worship him with no regret, no doubts, no ifs, no buts, no thoughts of any kind, and in this cleansing act of flesh and spirit find my every question answered, no fears can stand. The touch upon my head of God's own hand. Two Mothers O Mary, as the time went by, did you dread to see your son, the focus of the Pharisaic eye? And did you know that he was bound to die? I think you did. And Mary, did that dreadful knowledge on you sit, eroding all your joy and laughter bit by bit? And did you plead with him, abandon it? Perhaps you did. But Mary, did you realise that just like you, I had a son with fearful visions too and watched him grow? Obsession in his heart, a man apart. And Mary, while your son walked his calling unto death, my son's heart was ravaged by regret that this was not the warrior of his dreams. And so he lent his broken heart to evil schemes. These two young men both chose their day of death. Mine a traitorous coward, yours a king. And so I ask you, Mary, my son, having played his part in God's redemption scheme, will your Redeemer son my son redeem good friday crush bruise curse rage degradation Center stage. Friends run. Mother cry. Sacrifice son. Die. Side pierced. Blood shed. Satan laughs. God dead. Sky dark, heartbreak, courage now, just wait. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Evening Praise for the Light, Thursday Evening O joyful light of the holy glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, now that we have come to the Son's hour of rest, the lights of evening around us shine. We praise the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Worthy are you, O Lord, at all times 
to be praised with undefiled tongue, O Son of God, O giver of life. Therefore, you are glorified throughout the universe. Psalm 61, a reading first from Romans fifteen thirteen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In God alone is my soul at rest. My help comes from him. He alone is my rock, my stronghold, my fortress. I stand firm. How long will you attack me to break me down as though I were a tottering wall or a tumbling fence? Their plan is only to destroy they take pleasure in lies. With their mouth they utter blessing, but in their heart they curse. In God alone be at rest my soul, for my hope comes from him. He alone is my rock, my stronghold, my fortress, I stand firm. In God is my safety and glory, the rock of my strength. Take refuge in God, all you people. Trust him at all times. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Common folk are only a breath, the great an illusion. Placed in the scales, they rise. They weigh less than a breath. Do not put your trust in oppression, nor vain hopes on plunder. Do not set your heart on riches, even when they increase. For God has said only one thing, only two do I know, that to God alone belongs power, and to you, Lord, love, and that you repay us all according to our deeds. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 20 to 22. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. The word of the Lord. Normally when you're doing this in private, you would take a um, silent prayer time. Sorry, but I still have this cold. Uh, so now I shall do a uh, reading from Psalm 112 and the Canticle of Mary is Magnificat, Luke 1, 46 to 55. Who is like the Lord our God, the one enthroned on high, who stoops down from the heights to look down, to look down upon heaven and earth? My soul proclaims the presence, the greatness of the Lord. Excuse me, sorry. My nose is giving me trouble. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. 
My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on his lowly servant. And from this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and has sent the rich away empty. For he has come to the help of his servant Israel. For he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Invocations Lord, you have saved us from slavery to sin. Give us the freedom of your children. Help all who seek your light to find it. Let them be consecrated in the truth. We remember the widowed and the orphaned. Comfort them in your love. And together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And together we pray the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Concluding Prayer Lord God, ever faithful, see us gathered before you as the day draws to a close. Confirm our hearts in your love and keep alive in us the memory of your goodness and kindness which have appeared in Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Amen. May the souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And the saint of the day, pray for us. And the saint for today, the 20th, is Saint Biuno, England, 7th century. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. And after reading sacred scripture, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word you have spoken to me through the treasure of the scripture. Make these words a living reality in my life, a constant guide, a lamp for my feet, and a light to my path. Amen. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may put to death all sinful thoughts and actions. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may live as God's child. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may be free from slavery to sin. Lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may pray and cry out, Abba, Father, lead me, O Holy Spirit, that I may possess the inheritance of grace that awaits me. Amen. Thank you all so much for listening. I had not looked at any of what I read in that little leaflet book that Angela Canning 
my friend from church loaned me. It's obviously from her friend by Wren, whoever Wren is. I don't know female or male, but I suspect female. I don't know. Um, I will try and put some of the links, but or the names of the, the... I'm not sure how much time it's going to take because my eyes are a bit tired. But I'll do my best to put some information, but there is nothing on that leaflet to direct me to who the author is, but apart from Angela Canning. So I have to find out more, won't I, on Sunday. God bless you all. Thank you so much for listening and sending you the peace of Christ. And may you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. And don't worry about what's going on in the world and all around you. Just pray, stay close to Jesus and Mary and Joseph and just focus on God because this is not our eternal home. So we just... Let them fight amongst themselves is what I say. <laughs> we can't do anything about what they're doing. We can only pray. That's the best thing. And, and keep the peace of Christ in you all the time. God bless.